Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the sauce number 203C US4. This is a uh, concealed hinge by sauce is what it is. The name sauce is, in my opinion, literally con uh, synonymous with concealed hinges. Even though sauce has a couple of other products that I can think of, it's certainly concealed hinges that come to mind. So when you buy one, you're buying a pair, or two each of the 203. C means carded. It's packaged down on cardboard. Uh, US 4 is satin brass. Uh, let's take one out of the packaging here and take a closer look at it. So when it comes to the world of sauce, basically the question is how thick is the how thick is the door that or whatever you're installing it to? How, how thick is that? And that will drive the uh, size of the hinge that is permissible for you to consider and then also the um, weight of the item will dictate the size and the quantity that you'll use okay this is obviously for a smaller door a 203 probably something in the three quarter inch range which we're going to go over in a moment I'm a big fan of sauce hinges uh, there are many people who don't like these because they do not give any sort of provision for adjustment. You cannot vertically adjust these. You cannot laterally adjust these at all. So you cannot make any adjustments vertically. You cannot make any adjustments laterally. And you cannot adjust them in the door pocket position at all. Um, there are people who will not use these because it doesn't feature those sorts of uh, control over the over the hinge. Sauce makes really nice, really big hinges for full-size doors, not adjustable. I've heard it said that Sauce will never manufacture such a product. Um, there are lots of companies who manufacture concealed hinges that are 3D uh, adjustable or adjustable in three dimensions. Um, I am, I've always, I, I have always been, and I do remain suspect of those types of hinges for two reasons. First of all, when I learned how to work, when I taught myself um, how to, and of course with other people uh, helping me learn how to do it, uh, mortise wood doors and frames for hardware, there were no adjustable hinges. It was, your client has asked you for three sauce 218s in this door, you're going to mortise it in the right location. <laughs> and if you don't, then you have a boat anchor. Uh, get another door and start over. So I, I, in that baptism by fire approach, I was never, I, I'm not intimidated by it because I just learned um, it needs to be accurate. It's door hardware. It needs to be certainly within a 32nd of an inch. Um, there are other people who don't have the same sort of background or experience of someone who has spent a lot of time machining doors, working with routers, tools, things of that nature, from hammer and chisel all the way up to multi-axis routers. Uh, the ability to understand how to mortise this is something that you will gain with time and exposure to doing it. Um, the reason I'm suspect of the adjustable hinges is because I, in 30 years of selling sauce, I can tell you that we have hung obs ob obscenely heavy material on sauce. We've taken a 3070 16 gauge steel stiffened door and then laminated three quarter granite onto the face of it. Okay. Um, although significant substantial prep, uh, modification, alteration had to be uh, done to accomplish that so the door would actually uh, rotate or move to the open position based on the degree it needed to go. Um, so the point is the sauce hinge is capable of handling tremendous weight, tremendous weight. Um, And in 30 years, I've had one client, and just about six months ago, actually, came in and said, my sauce hinge is broken. And I says, well, I says, I've never seen that happen. I says, what happened? Was someone doing chin-ups on the top of the door? And the client's response was, <clears throat> no, <clears throat> it's a bookcase. And somebody sat on top of the bookcase. <laughs> so one of the hinges literally succumbed to all that crazy weight on it. It was a smaller hinge, like maybe a 210. Um, so there was also a, a, a quote from the founder of the product that basically said, I don't care how heavy your door is. Keep throwing my hinges at it. It'll handle it. So anyway, let's move on. Um, all that you really need to be absolutely sure is that the dimension from the face of the door to where you start the route, the prep, 
does not exceed the maximum allowable because what will happen is the door will try to open and that portion of the unmortised portion of the door is going to hit that face of the frame and we'll just demonstrate that quickly. So before we get into the extended description, this is in the US4 finish, which is satin brass. Uh, admittedly, it looks better in real life than it does on the camera. On the camera, well, actually no, that, that's pretty faithful. I have some images down below that make it look appear to be a bit bronze in color, but right there, that's that's satin brass. Okay. Now, um, this is going to be available in lots of different finishes, and I'm going to look at a, a screen here. Uh, a US 10 BL, which is a bronze lacquered, they call it. US 14 for satin. Uh, pardon me, bright nickel. US 15 for satin nickel. 19 for black. 26 for polished chrome, 26D satin chrome, US3 for polished brass, US4 satin brass, and then US5 antique brass. So lots of color choices when it comes to that. And importantly, the black finish. It's the year 2020 now and people are, black is the new, you know, Vogue color and black's a great color. It's, it's timeless. Um, they were making black trim on locks 150 years ago. So uh, all, you know, a, a complement of different finishes. This is going to work on a door with a maximum thickness of three quarter. Okay, so when you dive into the world of sauce, it's not oh I need a 203 hinge. It's it's approaching it from which is the proper sauce hinge to use for my application, which is thickness and then weight. And the way to really dive into that is to look at the supporting documentation. So let's switch to the camera view, pardon me, to the screen view, and let's do so now. So this is the item that we are looking at, the Sauce 203 hinge, wood or metal applications, three quarter to one inch. Oh, okay, I see what they're saying. It's a minimum, not maximum, minimum thickness of three quarter. That's important, uh, up to one inch. The 203 is made of zinc, weighs about 0.29 pound, at least the pair does with its packaging. Cabinet style hinge will provide superior appearance. Sure, it's concealed. And durability, that's that's to be absolute. Flush fit, compact, smooth operation are necessary. They will open to 180 degree, provided that you install them, mortise them according to the uh, installation instructions. Okay, details here down below. Sold as a pair, when you buy one, we're gonna sell you a pair. Okay, and the unit price is indeed for a pair of the hinges. Talks about the um, size of the material uh, in terms of the screws and what your pre-drill hole size needs to be for wood screws. An interesting thing here is that if you're dealing with a soft wood, you'll need to go with a... Um, you, can, you can get away with a smaller hole size. Now these are numbered sizes. Number sizes are not fractional, they're number sizes. Number size bits are really great because you get a much more, uh, you get a smaller increment from size to size so that you can better dial in exactly the prefit size necessary, especially when it comes to screws. So they're saying you're, if you're drilling into softwood, use a size 52. And if it's hardwood, they want a little bigger hole um, for the hardwood and the smaller the number, the larger the hole is uh, the larger the diameter the bit is in a in a drill size in a in a numbered size, you can easily search what the closest fractional size is to this material. Actually, let's do it now um, because uh, drill bit number size. And the reason I want to do this is because so a number forty four is point oh eighty six. So you know, uh, almost 332nd, 086. So 5, 10, 1 divided by 128 times 5. Okay, way too small. Times 9, times 11. So to get close to 086, you would need a drill bit that's 11 128ths of an inch. You're not going to find that. So you're going to be dealing with either a 
five sixty fourths or a six sixty fourths, which would be uh, six sixty fourths, uh, an eighth, an eighth of an inch, and neither of those are going to be accurate at all. Did I say that right? So you'll be either at a five a five sixty fourths. Oh no, I didn't say that right. A, or a twelve sixty fourths. That's way off. What am I thinking about? So a five sixty fourths. Or a a three thirty second is the number that I'm looking for, and neither of those are really great options. They're not close enough. The point is, is the root diameter of the screw. When I put my caliper on it, it measures point one. 0.122. So they're saying 0.086. Um, for a screw that has a root diameter of point, that's really that that's really an odd size. Yeah, it's closer to to 0 0.107, 0 0.107. So maybe. You know, 80% of the root diameter of the screw is what they're wanting when it's a hardwood, and probably, you know, 75% of that. Um, you know, when it's a softwood screw, a softwood material. So, anyway, not to dive too deep into that, if you do woodworking, you're, you're going to own a caliper, you're going to own a router, and I think you'd want to own a numbered drill bit size set as well. Now, lots of uh, extended description information down here, and we're going to get to that stuff. But first, we talked about how to get to the hinge that you want. That link to the manufacturer's page there is going to allow you to pull up the nomograph. The nomograph is the governing document with SAUCE. It's also listed in the full product catalog, but let's just look at the nomograph. So the first question is, what is your door thickness? So let's just say that it's three quarter inch for the sake of argument. Here's three quarter minimum door thickness. And be mindful, you can, um, I said up to one inch, you can use this on a thicker door and it's because there's a certain back set dimension that has to be not exceeded. So in our example, and you'll notice the 203 is safely in the three quarter inch range. Um, door width, door height. So pick a door width. Let's just you know say it's 20 inch, and that the door weighs you know 30 pounds. You're going to go 20 inch over to 30. Uh, you know you're really going to get whatever my tape measure or whatever my, my ruler is going to extend me to down here, and then go straight across. Okay, down in this area, and I'm not sure which column is 203. It's this column here, so it's safely area. It safely tells us that two hinges is the appropriate um, quantity for a 20-inch wide door. That's 30 pounds. That's th um, uh, that's minimum three-quarter thick. So the nomograph is where you start. Okay, and you go from there, and then you know you've got a range of hinges that you can use depending on how your door weight affects that. You can then check the dimensional properties of the hinge. Let's say that you're going to consider a 203. Great. Jump back to the 203. And now we can look at all of the other data. Um, gives you dimensional properties which are mentioned here. Hinge sizing chart. That might be the nomograph. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, Cased jam detail, clearance detail, temp. Let's just go through these. The nomograph we've done. Cased jam detail. So, you know, this is going to be important to observe 
Um, what you need to be mindful of. If you're installing this into a cased opening frame and you have casing, if the catalog dimension E is exceeded, the door may not open. Catalog dimension E is the really important part. Uh, so you can see quite clearly that you're only going to get this door open so far, not because of the E dimension, but because you have some applied casing. Okay, So important to be mindful of that. Clearance detail. Uh, okay, great. So this is a really nice document that's going to show a variety of different uh, scenarios when you are trying to make your door get to a certain degree of opening to be mindful of. Um, and you can just review this. We won't really go through it. But you can see what you have to do <clears throat> based on you know, 180 degree opening standard back set with material applied to the face of the door and frame. Um, dots show any thickness can be used for 90 degree opening. Sure. So, it, it, and really when you get to 90 degree and you're not going to exceed that, then you don't have a lot of trouble with where you place that. And that was, uh, back to my granite door story, the limitation was after my partner had plotted it and or put all the data into AutoCAD, we were able to tell them, here's going to be your maximum degree of opening, uh, which was exactly what they needed. And we supplied an overhead stop to make sure the door didn't go past that. You know, the weight of the granite aside, um, 180 degree with no back set and material applied. So the back set is the term that I had just used. They're also using it, which is here to here. This is where there is no back set and you've applied that material. And when you brought that hinge all the way through to the face of the door, basically through the face of the door, 90 degree material, uh, 90 degree uh, degree of opening with material applied to the door, you can see where you get into trouble with that. And the same scenario just simply reversed. And our instance was. Um, I think we were, that granite door was this application, except the granite was held back so that when the door went to 90, that granite occupied that space otherwise. I think that's what was done. I don't, I don't recall. It was, it was probably in 1997 that we did that. Um, clearance reduces to approximately a 64th of an inch as door approaches the frame opening. Beyond the point of clearance, beyond that, Point, the clearance increases to the maximum clearance when the door reaches its fully open position at 180 degree. See the hinge template drawing for that dimension, etc. Don't exceed dimension E. So what they're saying is you're going to get down to a 64th and then it's going to open up like this. The reason is, is because if this is the vertical axis of pivoting, that vertical axis of pivoting starts here. No, well, actually it starts here goes to here and moves through the entire cycle. So here to here to here. So that vertical axis of pivoting uh, really goes through an arc. Well, it actually goes through an arc. So that's an important concept when we are talking about other related hardware to the item. This vertical axis of pivoting floats through the opening as the door goes from zero to 90 to 180 degree. The point is, is if you're doing an overhead stop, if you're doing sauce hinges on a full size door, 216s, 218s, 220s, and you're gonna use overhead stops, those overhead stops need to be ordered according to the means of hanging the door so that the factory can supply you with the proper templates given the fact that that vertical axis of pivoting is not stationary and that it floats through the opening. Super important to understand that only if you have other hardware that depend on that position of the vertical axis of pivoting. Not so much when you're doing a cabinet door, obviously. Template, now this is where the rubber meets the road. This tells us everything, everything. You don't need to know anything about this hinge except this document, in my opinion. Back in the old days, I think this was the only document that existed. Um, so here's the important part. 
one eighth inch if exceeded door may not open so that's the dimension from the face of the door to the prep or the face of the frame to the prep that has to be not exceeding the dimension on the template so if you do one thing right that's for sure well it all has, it all has to be done right uh, but this this is this this is mandated um, you can't get away with a lot of uh, liberties with this hinge and if you're experienced with a router and you make a living as a as a um, a carpenter who focuses on finish carpentry this would be well within your skill set in my in my opinion I don't make a living doing that work but I've done it and I don't make a living doing it and I've done it without 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 any trouble um, so prepping this is really just two steps uh, you know you have your body prep here and then you have your plate prep here so if I was gonna when I mortise these I'm gonna prep this deep body which is gonna be three-quarter wide it's gonna be half inch thick um, or three-quarter long and half inch thick and it's gonna be centered on everything else then I'll do my plate what's the width of my face plate I would next ask myself and let's see where we find the width of our face plate right here it's half of an inch okay so I'm gonna use a two flute carbide half inch router bit and I'm gonna prep that inch and three-quarter overall length top to bottom I'm going to use that same bit and plunge in deeper to give me the body that is, you know, 1 in 15, 30 seconds, uh, minus 3 16 minus 3 16 minus this tiny margin is going to give me the body depth. You know, uh, whatever, inch and a half, uh, minus 3 eighths, inch and an eighth, so about a half of an inch deep, maybe just heavy on that. And indeed, just doing that math in my head, if I put my tape measure on the hinge, yeah, it's like 17, 30 seconds. So just heavy on half of an inch is what your depth is going to need to be for that, plus your thickness, naturally. So, you know, you know how wide, you know how long, you know how wide and how long, you know your center line, and you know your back set. At this point, you're done. There's nothing else to worry about. Just start to, start to do your router preparation. Just don't exceed this, otherwise you'll have trouble as it was called out in the clearance detail information. You, you will have trouble. Just don't exceed it. Now, having said that, you're going to maintain an eighth of an inch. What it does over here in terms of the thickness, oh, they're calling three-quarter mortise. Sorry, I didn't see that earlier. Um, you can have the door thicker and thicker and thicker. You know, it doesn't matter because you're maintaining that dimension so that you can have your thickness. That will get into the weight and the width of the door as well in terms of what you select to use. So this is really the governing document. It's a lot of dimensions. You don't need all of them if you have the hardware in your hand, but let's face it, you're probably going to be measuring the hardware in your hand or you're going to be using it as a way to position like where you, where you will pre-drill the holes. Okay, Super simple uh, once you kind of study it. Now, hinge location, uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, let's just talk about it now. So when it comes to hanging doors on saws hinges, this material runs counter to the standard industry prescribed positioning of hinges. If you're doing full-size doors, if you're doing cabinet doors, you're, you know, do your thing. Um, if you're doing full-size doors, you need to be mindful of, you know, we're used to here in at least the United States, top, middle, and bottom. Well, if you leave the United States, if you're on a cruise boat, or if you're in Europe, and why a cruise boat? Well, because they're built in Europe. You'll see two hinges at the top, and one at the bottom, okay? Um, that's what Sauce recommends on some of their material. You're gonna wanna probably check with the door manufacturer to make sure that you do not violate their warranty on the p positioning because the industry says for doors up to 60 inch, they want two hinges. For every 30 inch thereafter, they want an additional hinge spaced equally, basically. Um, However, 70% of the weight of the door is hung by that top hinge. So that's why you will very often see 
two hinges, you know, not soldier stacked in this case, but set up biased towards the top of the door because all the work's being done up here, okay? So I would check with the manufacturer to be sure. Um, gosh, six hinges, yeah, that's going to be one heck of a tall or heavy door or both most likely. Now, talking about mortising the material, let's go to the manufacturer's page here where we can pull up that full product catalog. And that full product catalog is definitely a, is a, a very much worthwhile review. But I'm searching for the, term, the word template. And they have a template for the 203. It's the 203 IT. So the way that these work is they simply nail onto the door. And you will have these two posts that you will leave in place to route that body. And then you pull those posts out and then you'll route the plate. And all that you're changing there is the depth at which you're routing it. Be mindful, the dimension that you use for the underside of the header to the center of each hinge needs to be adjusted on the door if you have an eighth of an inch gap. That dimension is then top of the door to the top of the hinge, an eighth of an inch less than the underside of the header to the top of the hinge. So really neat. Um, I have, I think when I uh, last did a sauce prep, I just made my own, um, basically taking the template and saying, okay, what dimension do I need? Allowing for the collet on my router, and they're absolutely going to tell you that you need very particular collet. Well, I call it a collet, that's not a collet. It's a router, it's a, it's a guide, it's a bushing and lock nut. The diameter of it down here and the size inside of here need to collude to be compatible with what you need to achieve. So you can get the whole system from Sauce if you don't want to have to think about it. And I would encourage you to do that. It's just for this one job, I, I you know, when, when, you are, when you're in the wood shop, you're not going to pay someone to, to give this to you. You're, you're going to make it yourself. Um, and that's just what I did. On, on, it may have been a 216, and I didn't need to do it often, and I just made my own. But you do need to have a template, there's no doubt. Then, of course, the thickness of the template is important when talking about the router guide bushing. Okay. They make steel door, they make reinforcements if you're doing steel door work. We did a project in Manhattan, two doors, and they were obscenely expensive uh, because of what they were. Um, the hardware, the door design, the gauge of steel. We did a 14 gauge door, and they laminated 12 gauge onto it, 12 gauge stainless onto a 14 gauge steel stiffened door. Sauce was my go-to, 220s. So when I had the hollow metal door manufacturer make the material, they just ordered the reinforcements from Sauce. Well, they may have made their own, but I believe that they ordered the pre-made reinforcements for that material. Okay, So routing for this stuff does not need to be complicated. In my opinion, uh, and I know that I'm in the minority uh, opinion. It, in my, in, in my opinion, it takes more work to figure out how to adjust these very, very fine hinges from Tectus. Now, <clears throat> I've been suspect of the adjustable hinge idea for a long time because I'm concerned with the long-term health of the installation. <clears throat> You're mechanically adjusting the hinges uh, for height, where it uh, laterally, and then where it relates in the door pocket, and you know, if it's a screw, it's going to come loose. And that's my that's my hesitation. Now, to argue the opposite side of that, I have a client of mine who's been in the business for decades, and he's been using Tectus for 20 or 15 years. He's never had a maintenance issue with them. And I have said, well, that's really great to hear. Um, but I do believe in not reinventing the wheel, uh, which is why I'm a staunch Sauce fan. Okay. That link to the manufacturer's page, that's going to allow you to review not only all the sauce products we sell, but also a link to their website, as well as a link to that full product catalog. Go through it. Lots of neat information that's there. If you need to breach into the world of sauce, you know, or, or, or dive in, dive in. The water's fine. Um, great quality product that is simple and straightforward and is going to give you decades of reliable service. Let's wrap up this video on camera.
Now, screws are included. Wood screws are going to be included standard. They can supply at, at an additional cost screws for a metal application. I think I've done a metal application. Oh, no, no, that's not accurate. I've done a metal application more than once. Uh, it has to be specified. You have to, you have to say, we need metal screws for this, and there is an additional charge for machine screws. Um, great quality product, and I hope that my um, preference for the sauce hinge has come through loud and clear in this video. If you have any questions on your order in terms of how to go about machining it, reach out to me. I don't make a living in the wood shop, but I've spent, I've spent a lot of time in the wood shop, and it's always been, here's the template, here's your tools, here's the hardware. If you have it, go for it. And really, the most challenging piece of hardware was an olive knuckle hinge. It was never anything like this. Um, the olive knuckle hinge really baked my noodle because where you breach the edge of the door on the frame, the door and the frame are at different positions. And I studied that darn thing for an hour. Um, and I, it was perfect, 100%. It worked. But the olive knuckle hinge baked my noodle a little bit. Um, but when you break down a piece of hardware like this and you say, okay, how many different steps are there in mortising this? There are two in this. There's this part, and then there's this part. And I always like to do the deepest first and get to the finish work last, less opportunity of gouging or nicking my door. But I've got most of the work already done. But like I said, I don't make a living doing this stuff in terms of a shop setting. But I would definitely be uh, uh, very interested in helping you uh, get through and make sure that you mortise the material correctly. Timeless. 30 years, one hinge failure, and that's because a kid sat on top of the bookcase. Any questions on the Sauce 203 and a US 4 finish or any other Sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.